we receive a greater understanding of our dominion as a son and as a daughter of the King of Kings, we are encouraged and increased boldness comes forth in our lives. As we look at the ministry of Christ before the cross, we embrace the example he set forth. He displayed a sinless life and he showed us how to live empowered by the Holy Ghost. There are differences in the Christ that was portrayed before the cross of Calvary and the Christ who is now. He is completely triumphant forevermore. Hallelujah. He was poor, so we become rich. Amen. He was in sorrows, so that we come into gladness. Yes. He was in grief, so we are, are delivered and we are able to be healed. Yes. Too many believers are content in standing just past ah. salvation's door. Wow. Never truly stepping into what he paid for for all of us to walk in. In this life, well, he doesn't want his people stuck there. Right. Amen? He wants us to remember that he paid it all yes. and go forth, yeah. partaking in his victory. Amen? Yes. Yes. I want to encourage you to grab a hold of, of this today. Uh, that, that grab a hold of the revelation set forth in 1 John 4.17. This whole sermon is really hinged on this, this one scripture here, if you can grab a hold of the, the true meaning of it. 1 John 4, 17, it says, because as he is, so are we in this life. We must come up higher and become one with Christ the Son. We are no longer a slave to sin and death, but we're joint heirs with Christ in all of his victory. We're marching forth triumphant. Amen. Jesus obtained the ultimate victory. And now he distributes power to us. Because we are his priesthood. Yeah. Amen? Right. Yeah. Sin and disease and death itself are all under his feet. Yeah. Even all of the devil's army and hell has to obey his every command. Yeah. Yeah. He is the ultimate power. Yeah. He is. He's not in competition with anybody ah. today. Come on. The devil isn't the opposite of God. That's right. That's right. At best, he's the opposite of Gabriel or Michael. Come on. That's right. Come on. Yeah. The devil ain't so big and bad. Our God is greater. Yes, he is. Jesus. We are joined heirs with Christ yes. by the Holy Spirit, and we're we're being we're born again into this triumphant life. Mm -hmm. And if we can embrace the Christ who is mm -hmm. and lives forevermore, we receive the victory, the dominion, and the power mm -hmm. that He gives us. Yes. We are blessed and highly favored. Yes. We are, are grace gifted. Yes. Come on. Charismatic means grace gifted. It means that you are moving in the gifts of the Spirit. We are grace gifted. And we walk in His love. He imparts all of this to us through the Holy Spirit. We are to live this victorious life because He won that victory. All of the gifts of the Spirit are working through us as the fruit of the Spirit are growing up in us. Ever redeemed one that is walking in his saving grace is being transformed into his likeness yes. as we commune with God. Right. Before the cross, Jesus reached forth through faith yes. to what he knew and what he envisioned. Yes. And as we walk in and demonstrate, he walked in and he demonstrated the kingdom of God here on the earth. Yes. But after the cross, Christ was the first one to enter into kingdom life. Yes. And we got to grab a hold of the revelation that of his resurrection. We too are now to walk in the newness of life. As, as we gain the revelation of his victory. For as he is, so are we in this life. Not as he was before the cross. But as he is now, truly victorious. Amen? All of his healing virtue, his grace, and his transforming power. All of the angelic communion and the knowledge in his redeemed. His glorious, triumphant church, his priesthood. Amen. We're born again because of his resurrection. And revealed in the revelation, for, for as he is, so are we in this world. When we, we draw back and we look too long and focus too much on his humiliation and his sufferings, we, are, we can slip into a fear and a doubt. Right. Yes, we are to look into his wounds because by his stripes we are healed. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 
We look into it. But God doesn't want us stuck there, right. focusing on him, being humiliated and suffering. He wants us to understand that we should be focused on victorious, triumphant Amen. Christ Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants you to know it. Yes. He wants you to bite into it like a bulldog will bite into that revelation yes. and hold on to it. And know deep down in your spirit. Because yes. our view of him should be that, like just gloriously triumphant yes. and as his priesthood should we should focus on who he is now yes. our eyes have to be fixed fixed amen? amen and as you find out who he is and who he is now you find out who you really are amen. in this life our soul rises out of sorrows and out of yes. defeat yes. into a triumphant yes. child of God yes. and we need to gauge what we think about ourselves Based on God's word. Come on. Amen? Amen. Because when society is speaking, it's either the spirit of man speaking or it's the enemy speaking over mankind. Come on. Amen? That's right. Paul knew who he was in Christ Jesus. He was grounded in the word and he gauged his authority and his circumstances based on what God said. Yes. And that's what we're supposed to do. Come on, that's right. The body of Christ has to quit judging ourselves after the flesh, comparing ourselves to one another in the body of Christ because it waters down your spiritual warfare and it, it lessens your thrust against the enemy. Come on. Amen? Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to know what our marching orders are. Yes. You're not in competition with each other in the body of Christ. You gotta finish your own way, way strong. And if you don't know what you're supposed to do, you need to get on your knees and find out what your marching orders are. Because all all God wants you to do is finish your way strong. Come on. And what He's called you to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And then we can jointly fit as a puzzle as the body of Christ and encourage one another and uplift one another. Yes. Amen. Amen. We gotta leave the past in the past, just like Reverend Bill was saying, because your past does not dictate your future. Hallelujah! And you gotta understand that circumstances in the natural realm can be changed by what you're decreeing and God, the rhema word of God over that. Amen. Amen. Through Christ, Satan's head was bruised. His authority over our lives and our families' lives has been crushed, and it's past time that we get in His presence. And find out what our marching orders are. Amen. And find out who we are yeah. as sons and daughters of the king. Yeah. And take your place as a humbled son and a humbled daughter. Don't just sit around and wait for God to drop what he promised you in your lap either. It's time to stand up and exercise your authority. Yeah. And get to decree and declare what God has promised you prophetically. Or what he has promised you in the word. Amen? Amen. You gotta stand up and take your authority and take your place and start speaking it. Amen? Amen. Because one ray of a word from God trumps everything in the natural way. That's right. That's right. Doesn't matter what that doctor's report said. Come on. It don't matter what your boss said last week. You're getting that promotion and God's taking you up higher, amen. You're gonna have the best hours, the best, the best pay, amen. Your children are going to stay in that situation because they're, they're covered in the blood of Jesus. Come on. Amen? Amen. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. Psalms 8, 4 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and of the son of man that thou visitest him? Psalm 8, 2 says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained pray strength because of thy enemies. He gives us a grace of strength, doesn't he? Yes, he does. That thou might have still the enemy in the avenger. Mm -hmm. That's Psalm 8 2. So as we emerge, uh, immerse ourselves in the word of God and take time at his feet and commune with the Lord. We need to wait there and learn how to stay there until we have prayed it through. Until he fills us and empowers us. Then we are able to stand. And go forth against the enemy and still the hand of the enemy. Amen. Yes, amen. We got to learn how to wait yes. on the Lord. Yes. That's right. You wait on the Lord until He does it, and then when you know that He's filled you, then you get up and you. Yes. Amen. Because yes. we have the power over sin, the power of the devil, and we are called to make a difference in this life. Amen. We are not to leave people in bondage. If the Holy Spirit is inside of you, and if he came down and entered into your heart, 
then you have to grab a hold of the reality that he has made you, and as long as, along with all the other sons and daughters, master over the other, other power in this world. Or else the word of God is void. He said, greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. That's right. That makes you master because he's in you. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over every, over all the power of the enemy. Yeah. Does it say some of the power? power? No. Does it say no, everything but cancer? No. Come on, it says all, all, all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's Luke 10, 19. So if you, as you grab a hold of, a hold of the revelation, boy, it's, it's empowering. We've got to know who we are in Christ. Amen? Yeah, yes, that's right. It'll cause you to step out in boldness and majesty. Yes. Come on. That revelation will bring you up higher. And Christ will manifest his kingdom life through you here in this world. Thank you, Lord. You know, in the word it says, the glory will cover the earth. A lot of people kind of visualize this big glory stream coming from heaven and just encompassing the earth. But the truth is, his glory shines through his remnant bride. Hallelujah. And then it's Amen. in us, and it shines through us. Yes. So instead of being the subservient and broken under the weight of sin and the powers of darkness, you will arise and the enemy will flee. Amen. Amen. God says, submit to me. Amen. You submit to God. And the enemy will flee. That's right. Mark 16, 17, and 18 says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. The real child of God is to be master. And the purpose of his indwelling in you is to enable you to be an ambassador of God in the earth. We don't use our authority and, and dominion to control people. Come on. That is that is horrible. Your dominion is over the natural realm, the natural world, and our authority is given from, from the Lord on high, given to you over every other power, all of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. That same Holy Ghost and power that was in Jesus is the same Holy Ghost that lives in every born-again believer. Amen. Amen? You didn't get a smaller measure, measure of the Holy Ghost. Come on, that's right. You didn't get a thimble and Jesus Christ got, you know, a whole measure full. You got the same measure of the Holy Ghost as That's Jesus. The thing that is, Jesus knew how to surrender to the Father. Yes. There was nothing in his life that he held back and said, oh, you can have everything but this. You can have every, everything but this person I don't want to give you. This thing. Jesus was completely surrendered to the Father's will. We got to learn how to completely surrender, and he grabbed a hold fully of the revelation in God's plan. Amen. Amen. Yes. We were created to do some awesome works for the name of Jesus. Jesus said in John fourteen twelve, "Greater works than these shall you do." Right. But the question is, do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe that? You have to be fully persuaded, because there's no yeah buts and what ifs in the Word of God. He's pretty sure about what he said. Yes. Amen? Yes, that's right. So you've got to be fully persuaded that this is the ultimate authority. Amen. His word. Amen? Amen? That God the Father and God the Son has given you the Holy Spirit not to leave you weak or in weakness or leave you in powerless over the enemy, but to make you master and give you dominion and authority in God's kingdom here on the earth over every devilish force there was. Now when you look up dominion in the Strong's, it says, rule over, subdue, master, govern, and exercise lordship over. Now, most Christians have somewhat grabbed a hold of the revelation that mankind is to subdue the earth. However, they haven't fully understood that God has given us power and kingdom authority through the Holy Ghost. And the authority, if you look it up in the Strong's, it says to have power, right. Now, look here. That's legal right. Because right. God, Father, is the righteous, the ultimate righteous judge. Yes, he, he has the highest court there is. Right. Jesus is your defending attorney, yeah. and the devil is your prosecutor. <laughs> uh, when you think about coming into his courts with thanksgiving, yeah. his, his gates and his courts, you're coming into his high court. 
Your yeah. spirit is transcending right before the throne room of God. Yes. And so God, through that, ator that authority, he's saying, I'm giving you legal right. Yes. Mm. I'm giving you liberty and jurisdiction, strength and commandment. We are to speak life, declare God's word, and be light. Exercising dominion and kingdom authority in the spiritual realm, which affects the natural realm. Yes. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Come on. Mm -hmm. More abundantly. Yes. Thank you, Father. Come on. Thank you. I'm not I'm not gonna get on the big rabbit show, but I do have to say this. There are things that we say in life and we don't even realize we're cursing ourselves. Wow. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Easy come, easy go. Wow. No, 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 no. Easy come, easy come, easy come, easy, easy come, multiply. Yeah. Yeah. You're a God of multiplication, Lord. Yeah. Stretch it out, Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I mean, there's all types of things. You sit back today, I want you to think about all the things that just kind of rolls off our mind, off our mouth. All this always happened. No, this never happens in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That's right. This doesn't happen anymore to me. Amen. That's right. Come on. Okay? So yeah. get a hold of that. Jesus made the declaration, I am come that they might have life. Yeah. We don't die the second death. Amen. Right. Yeah. Praise God. And now we're living empowered by the Holy Ghost. The thing that was forfeited in the Garden of Eden was regained through Christ. And God gave mankind dominion and he made mankind his understudy to have dominion and authority. Mankind was created in the natural realm and in the spiritual realm of God at the same time. He was created to live in both of those. He was created to live in both realms. Psalms 8, 4 through 6 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and have crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hand, and thou hast put all things under his feet. Come on. Our God envisions and creates with a word. He said, let there be light, and bam, there was light. Yes. And our God speaks by faith and creates with a spoken word. He declares a thing in faith because he knows that his word is the absolute. Yes. And the thing manifests in the natural realm. And he is a faith God, amen? Yes, yes. And he's even put a measure of faith in all of us to believe on him. Amen. He made us, mankind, of faith. Faith man. All God had to do was speak and believe that the planets would be, and there they were. Amen? And mankind was created to live by faith and to speak declarations of what God said Amen. Yeah. to change the natural facts of circumstance. Yeah. So if you get a hold of who you really are in Christ and the power and the dominion that has been restored to you through the finished work of Christ, every devil will flee from you. Yeah. If you submit to God and declare his word, they will flee. Yeah. Resist the devil. Amen? That's right. Through his substitutionary sacrifice, God is able to redeem us from our sins. And he's able to impart to us his very nature. And he gives us eternal life and adopts us into the family so that we can call him father. But it's not by adoption only. We're not just all adopted kids. But it's a spiritual birth. We have been birthed into the spirit. We are in union with God. We are in union with the Father. We are in union with Christ Jesus. And we are in union with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And it's sad that so many believers don't get the revelation past salvation. And without the understanding that they are just as much of a son or a daughter as Jesus Christ was to the Father. They can't walk fully in the dominion and the authority because their relationship with Father God is clouded. Through our new birth, God has bestowed to us the lost dominion and authority that was forfeited in the Garden of Eden. But here's the secret. Here's the key. The secret is to walk with God. Yes. Faithfully obey Him. Yes. And, our, and, and our confession of God's word, it's got to be, this is the ultimate authority. And then speak it, the rhema word, and then watch it to be manifest in its season. Yes. It's going to manifest in its season because God is faithful and the, and the angels look over his word that it never comes back more. That's right. That's right. That's right.
What God does for one, he'll do for another. Yeah. He's no respecter of persons. Right. Mankind is searching because he knows that he lost something somewhere. Mm. All of history of those that have gone before us are in us. We know that there was something lost. And so mankind is trying to regain it. But they're not going to find it in lodges. They're not going to find it in secret societies and man-made religions. That's right. They're not, they don't have the birthright, the new birthright that they claim to have. Mm -hmm. Only the redemption and the new life found through Jesus is the answer, amen, because you're not going to find it anywhere else. Right. Romans 5, 17 says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more than which received abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall reign in, in life by one Jesus Christ. See, God's not limited. So we've got to take our limitations off of God. Right. He's able to do all things. Yes, he is. Amen? Amen. Right. Revelations 1.18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And then he says, and have the keys of hell and death. Amen. Jesus took back that authority and dominion God that Adam had gave up. And everyone that receives Christ is now identified with Christ. We're not identified with Adam. We're identified with Christ and we've been restored. Yes. He did it for you and he did it for me. And as sons and daughters, we should be able to speak to the enemy and say, depart. And I don't care how much he hollers and screams and belly whines. Amen? Amen. Because he's got to do it. We find in 1 Samuel 22 that when David fled to the cave of Ulam, all of his brethren came to him. In Samuel, 1 Samuel 22, 2, it says, And every one that was in distress, meaning anguish, and every one was in debt, and every one that was discontented, meaning bitterness and a, a cry of pain, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were about 400 men. Now these 400 men became David's trained in the most invincible army ever seen in their day. They were simple men. Simple men with extraordinary abilities. They looked like average Jews, about five foot eleven. But these men that were servants of David took out four giants. Right. Amen? Right. In 2 Samuel 21, 22, it says, These four were born to the giant of Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. They conquered because they were covenant men. And God calls his church... His call to his church today is to come forth from your hiding place and declare the ground on which you meet your, the enemies of God and meet them in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't run away from the enemy. God said to claim the ground that you're walking on yeah. and meet them. Yes. Amen? Amen? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God wants us, his fire to fall. And, he, and if we consecrate ourselves unto God and submit, the fire is going to fall. That's right. God's fire is creative in righteousness as well as destructive of sin. And just like Christ, we are to speak faith using the, the rhema word of God as our sword. Amen? Amen? Matthew 5, 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger mm -hmm. and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. God is looking for hungry hearts. Yes. And if you're not hungry enough, get on your knees and ask God to make you more hungry. Oh, because he wants to stoke the fire that's inside of you today. That's right. Amen? Amen. It's time that we get hungry. Just like a scientist studies a textbook, he really weighs every word, every meaning of every word. We should also be approaching God's word the same way. That's right. If you don't have a strong accordance, if you don't know how to buy a Bible app where you can really look into what it really means in the Hebrew and the Greek and, and, and get the full meaning of what God is saying, I, I, I'm asking you to, to, to look into that. Because we need, there's so much layers, there's so many layers of meaning here. Amen. And I want you to consider the force of this scripture. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. He was apostle by the will of God. That's right. Amen. He thought he was on a road doing something different. You know what he was doing. <laughs> by the will of God. According to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Timothy 1.1. For there is no life outside of Christ in this realm, and there's no life outside of Christ eternally. 
1 John 5, 11 through 12, it says, And this is the record that, I, that God hath given to, uh, to us eternal life. And this life is in the Son. And he that hath the Son hath life. But he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. John 6, 63 says, this, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Amen. The flesh profiteth nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Observing the words according to the promise of life, there is no promise outside of Jesus. He said, you must be born again. There's no way around that truth. You have to be born again. He is the only way. Now, when you think about the, the Israelites, when they put the blood on the lentil and the two blood, the two uh, posts, the doorposts. The evil spirits could not go past the blood. When you are born again, the blood of Jesus is over you. Amen? Come on. And the and Holy Spirit is the only one that can go through the blood. That's right. So Holy Spirit goes through the blood and he defends the house. Yes. Amen? Amen. And did you know that you are a spiritual house? Yes. First Peter 2 5 says, You are a spiritual house. A greater you know that greater is he that is in you that is in the world. So insignificant devils will try to lie and to tempt and try to do all types of things. But God has given us dominion and authority to walk right through them. And you can't, um, he can't by any means hurt you. So I want to ask the uh, worship team to come back up as we're bringing this to a close. You can play, play, um, play a little softly for me. I'm going to add this one last part. When the Israelites came to the Red Sea with Moses, it looked impossible on all sides. There were impassable mountains to the right and to the left. Pharaoh's army was behind them and the Red Sea was before them. And the enemy enjoys to ambush people. He enjoys to make you feel like you're trapped on every side. But here's Moses and he cries out for God to rescue them. And I want you to look at Exodus 14, 15, and 16 on what God says to Moses. He says, wherefore criest thou unto me? <laughs> God said, why are you crying to me? <laughs> Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. Yes. And the children of Israel will go on dry, dry ground through the midst of the sea. God did not say, Moses, stretch forth your hand and I'll divide the sea. No, he said, stretch forth your hand and divide it. Yes, yes. And I have given you authority and I've given you dominion. Yes. And you have faith in me. You know that I'm backing you up. Stretch forth your hand and divide it. You see, if, if you look at Exodus 14, 26, God tells Moses to stretch forth his hand over the sea and make the waters come back together again. That's right. God didn't even close them up like he did it the same way. He said, Moses, stretch forth your hand. See, God gave Moses authority and dominion, and he expected him to use it. That's right. And God is saying today that I have given you dominion and authority, and I'm expecting you to grow up and use it. Yeah. He wants his priesthood to be full maturity yeah. and start taking authority. Just like Bishop said, stop whining to God. He's, done, he's already done pay the price. So today, today we want to invite you to come up. We want to invite you to come up here and allow us to lay hands on you, to stir up the gifts that are inside of you. Stir up your most holy faith. You know what it says in 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 7. It says, Therefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has given us, the, has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. So we want to invite you to come up as uh, Pastor uh, Bill and Pastor uh, Colleen would like to help as well. If you have uh, never given your heart to Jesus, we want to invite you to come up to do that. If you want to recommit today, just when you're up here, let us know. We'll pray with you. And if you're, any of you are sick among you, the Lord said, call for the elders of the church and anoint them with oil. And pray the prayer of faith and they shall recover. So we just want to open the altar soon.